Hello, and welcome to week 6 of the Make Do Create project. We have spent the last 5 weeks looking at different kinds of animation and learning the principles behind how you create them. We have showcased how animation in different forms takes different skills and techniques to create, and maybe one in particular was extra interesting to you. This week we still have two principles to learn, and these are called solid drawing and appeal. I'm going to start today by going through the last two principles, and once we're armed with all 12, we're going to really try to apply them to an animation. So let's start with solid drawing. As the name suggests, this rule applies mostly to traditional animation as it was created before 3D animation existed. This principle is about taking your 2D art and making it appear three-dimensional. You want to believe the objects and characters take up a 3D space, so proper drawing techniques such as perspective drawing should be used. 2D animators often had 3D sculptures of their character to help this 3D visualization. These of course apply to 3D animation as well, the 3D part is taken care of of course, but this reel should also take into consideration the poses of your character, having strong lines of action, twists and weight, so your character won't look wooden or flat. And the last principle of animation is called appeal. What people find appealing differs for everybody of course, and appeal goes deeper than just their outward appearance. Having an appealing character doesn't necessarily just mean having a really good looking, realistic character, but Perhaps you think about what your character's traits are and then how you can portray them through its design. It also helps to have a diverse range of interesting looking characters. If you look at the Incredibles family for example, all of them look entirely different even though they're part of the same family. Their appearance and appeal correlates not only to what their superpowers are but also their personality and role within the family. Helen is a mother who has to be flexible, Violet is shy and not yet confident, and Jack-Jack doesn't have any defined powers because he's full of potential. And I believe that is number 12 and the conclusion to all our basic principles of animation. Even though these 12 principles are numbered, that doesn't mean that you have to apply them to your work in that order and then check them off a list. When applying these rules, you'll be jumping back and forth when you need them. Like, you'll be conscious of having suitable staging and correct timing through arts, but you might only use squash and stretch and exaggerate in a few places. Um, they're really a reference that you can look back on if you think your animation needs some improvement or to be pushed further. And with all the animation principles in mind, we're going to apply them to our animation today. In the background, I've just been drawing our little character, which is a dragon who's staring at his little barbecue here. I'm using the Flip a Clip app on my iPad, like we did in week two for 2D animation. And remember to create your own animation, just click the plus symbol, name your animation, 12 frames per second is fine, and then create project. And we're starting off today's animation with solid drawing. I did a very rough sketch of the character in grey and now I'm just going over it in black just keeping the details that I want and making the lines a bit more clean. Um, so solid drawing is one of the things that you'll be uh, trying to maintain throughout the entire animation as well as staging. I've also at the same time set up the stage for this character. Remember, staging is what we want the audience to look at, so he's obviously the main character and is taking up a uh, centre stage as well as the little barbecue, which is going to be the primary object that he's going to be interacting with. So already, just by drawing the scene and drawing our characters, we have, um, really without even thinking about it, applied solid drawing and uh, staging. And also, I tried to make this character look quite cute and friendly, um, so I guess I was trying to put a little bit of appeal into the character as well. To make things simpler, I recommend uh, using a number of layers when you're using this to separate your character from your object from your ground. Um, I made a, a background layer um, to put the ground in and I believe the ham on the barbecue is on a different layer just because we're going to be doing a lot of the selecting um, of the characters and the body parts so it helps to not select the entire scene at the same time.
So the idea for this little character is that he's going to be watching his food cooking and he's going to get quite impatient with how long it's taking because he's pretty hungry. Um, so what I'm doing now is I just copied, I just selected with the lasso tool the character and copied that character and pasted it onto the second layer. So you can see that um, the first layer is showing through with the onion skinning so we can reference it while drawing our second layer here. Um, our second frame rather and you can switch back and forth and see a little movement there. So he's just staring at his food longingly. And uh, for the stuff like the horns, his little ears and the spines, um, I'm going to be doing the majority of the next frames without including them just because his head is going to be moving so much and putting on stuff like spines and little extra details like that it's going to be cumbersome each time around so I recommend doing the main body parts first and then going back and adding in all the little tiny details afterwards and that also applies to the objects that you're drawing. Um, I'm just focusing on the dragon right now, there's no need for me to draw the barbecue each frame. I can come back and add that in later when I'm concentrating on its animation, but I'm just concentrating on the dragon's animation for now, so that's the only character that I'm drawing at the moment. And remember all your tools at the side, at the very top is your pen or pencil, underneath that is the rubber, underneath that is the select or lasso tool, and then you've got fill and text. All of these can be used to make your life a bit easier. Obviously the pen and rubber to create and erase your um, mistakes. Uh, and then the lasso tool I'm using a lot to just select certain parts that I want to move or certain parts that I want to copy and then paste later. So we're on frame 5 now and I'm using pose to pose to sort of map out the little actions that this dragon's doing and then that'll help me um, later once I get the, the main actions down I'll go back and do the in-betweens for this character. So right now he's getting a little bit impatient and he's just checking the time um, to see how long it's going to take for his little barbecue to finish and he's just tilting his head to the side slightly so make sure that um, your perspective changes and you can see his other eye because his head is tilted. When we come back and draw in his little horns and ears, um, you'll see them from a different perspective as well. They won't be so side on. And here I'm just making really small adjustments to his claws. Um, just to make it look like he's tapping his fingers after he looks at his watch. If you know your overall pose is going to be the same and you're only going to be editing a couple of things at a time like I'm doing for just the head movement and the hand movement, um, I recommend just copying and pasting your character so you don't have to draw them over and over again each frame. I'm just doing that by tapping the copy icon and then the paste icon And it's at this point that we're going to put in some exaggeration. Um, for this frame, the dragon is about to blow some fire onto the barbecue to cook the food faster. And we're just making his head really big and his mouth really big, um, almost oversized, just to emphasize that he's taking in a really deep breath at this point. With this action, we're also adding in anticipation. He's getting ready to, he's charging up, he's anticipating uh, making fire. And here it's going back to timing. We're going to have less frames in between the really big headed pose and the pose leaning down towards the fire. Um, that's going to make the movement look faster.
And remember to use your timeline just to check your progress. I'm just checking the little poses here to get the general gist of where we're going. I want the dragon to look at the barbecue for a little bit longer at the beginning so using timing I'm going to just copy the first frame and paste it for maybe four or five frames just to hold the pose a bit longer and you can do that simple enough by going into the frames viewer and you can click the frame that you want to copy copy symbol and then paste forward symbol and you can paste that as many times as you want and it'll just very quickly put it into your timeline for you. And in this section, the dragon is licking his lips and he's checking his watch, which is our secondary action for this character. This helps us show the dragon is both hungry and impatient while waiting for his food to cook. This is an example of where the lasso tool comes in handy. Instead of redrawing the whole head or the whole dragon again, I can just draw around the mouth because it's the thing that I want to change copy it, paste it onto the next frame, rub out the tongue and redraw the tongue and that just makes it a whole lot quicker. And here I'm just going over to the pen tool and holding down on the pen tip to make the pen thinner just to differentiate it from the dragon's outline. There's uh, actually a bunch of stuff happening with the dragon spit. I'm doing some straight ahead animation by just drawing one frame directly after another. There's some um, slow in when the drool is slowly dangling off the chin and uh, some stretch as it drops off the chin, uh, squashes back into a droplet and squashes further when it hits the ground. There's also some timing happening. I'm spacing the droplets further apart as they fall faster before they hit the ground. So who knew that dragon drool could be so complex in animation.
I'm just going back to the arm and I'm adding in one in between between the arm resting on his leg and snapping up to look at the watch. Sometimes when we're applying overlapping action and follow through, we can refer to it as drag. And that's sort of the case here with the very tip of his nose. It's dragging behind the rest of the head as he's throwing his head back up. So while we're stretching his head out, the tip of his nose is gonna follow through and catch up with the rest of his head once he's stopped again. So it's sort of two things at once. And for the in-betweens of the dragon sort of throwing his head back before he takes the deep breath, um, we're just going to make the, the face uh, stretch a little bit um, just to show the sort of motion blur, the drag happening there. And just sort of continuing the squash and stretch as the dragon's head uh, comes down as he's about to set the flame. Um, I just sort of clip the nose off the front and then uh, use the lasso tool to rotate um, and move it up a wee bit and then just sort of making like a, a stretchy bendy nose out of, out of that by connecting the dots after. Um, we also want to make sure no matter how fast the character's head is moving that we're following arcs. Um, with any swooping action like this, um, when we're moving the character's head down, it's not just directly under the previous head position, it's slightly forward and then down and slightly forward again following a sort of a swooping arcing motion.
So before I move any further here, I thought it was necessary to put in the background and the barbecue in with all the rest of the frames that we've been animating. Um, this process was um, a little bit long. Luckily, we don't have um, hours and hours of footage to go through, but I um, went into the background layer and copied it and then pasted it onto all of the layers um, where it was missing. And then that let me see that I sort of overshot the distance that the dragon's head went forward. So I just made the dragon's neck shorter so that he wasn't overlapping with the barbecue. It's always important to just sort of go back and check your work as you go so you can find any of these problems as you, as you move forward. That's why it's so handy to have the onion skinning and the timeline feature just so you can check frame by frame. And since fire is sort of an unpredictable and um, natural element, we can just use straight ahead animation for this, uh, keeping it simple with uh, squiggles, having it very gradually um, come out from the dragon's mouth and then with each frame um, just sort of engulf the whole ham. And then just for fun, we can sort of add in the, the fire almost charging up um, within the dragon's mouth. And here I'm just going to go in and uh, rub out the outlines of the ham where the fire is engulfing it and then went in and coloured in the ham with the pencil just to make it look burnt. As we go back to the beginning few frames and add in the spines and ears and stuff that we sort of took out um, beforehand, uh, this is our chance to add in any overlapping action or follow through, um, mainly in the ears as his head moves around and they flop about after it. And remember when we're doing follow through and overlapping action, it's the appendages that follow the main body, so they'll be the last ones to finish the movement and catch up. This is the time that I'm making use of the copy paste tool to just copy paste in the horns and the spines wherever they remain still. And when we're coming back to put the tiny flames at the campfire barbecue, um, we don't want to have anything overcomplicated here, just enough that um, there's a little bit of movement at this side of the screen because remember with staging, the dragon is the uh, main character here and we want to be looking at him uh, predominantly.
Um, once you're happy enough with your animation, you can save it by going to the top right menu and selecting Make Movie and you get to name it. And if you hit Make Movie, it'll render and then um, that'll give you a chance to upload it somewhere that you like or just save it to your device. And that's us, that's all 12 animation principles. I hope this helped and inspired anyone who's in any way interested in animation. And if you've made anything of your own, make sure you show it to us. Um, I am going to recommend a movie on this last week, just because it's my favourite one, How to Train Your Dragon. Maybe see if you can animate Toothless cooking up a fish. Thanks so much for taking part in Moonworks Make Do Create projects, and make sure you're subscribed for the rest of the series on the channel. Thanks and see you later.